Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Newman, for inviting me here today to talk to everybody about this issue that's near and dear to my heart. Thank you to the Congressman for some of those words because it really hit home to me. Uh, so we're all trying to make America a better place, a safer place, right? That's what we say all the time. We want to make everyone aware of the issues, but everyone's aware of the issues. I think the people in this room are aware of the issues. Now, where's the action? That's my whole thing. Where's the action? Where's the accountability? I retired from DEA in 2014, but I remain very engaged every single day of the week with my colleagues in multiple agencies, not just the DEA. Like this week, there was a big press announcement out of Paraguay on the big network of couriers that they took down. It was a whole raid. George Ramos and a bunch of these guys are sending lots of cocaine into the Middle East and to Africa, and they're all part of working with Ali Shamas, the guy who was extradited back to Miami uh, last year. But the point is, is that the agents in law enforcement are out there, they're trying to do the best, but this is a much bigger problem right? Uh, I wish these threats were going down, but they're not. They're growing. Everyone said that. The congressman said where evil meets evil, right? But when are we going to meet this? When are we going to deal with this? When are we going to stop talking about it? I'm sick of coming to these conferences and talking. I like to talk. I'm from New York. I could talk all day, but I hate talking about this topic. I have kids. We all have kids, friends, and all that stuff, and we see what's going on. The 241 brave uh, DOD warriors that we're blown up in the barracks back in Beirut. We forget about that stuff, okay? That's unfortunate. The bombings in Argentina in 1992, right? The terrorists are here now in the Western Hemisphere. So wake up. Congress, wake up. Law enforcement leadership, wake up. You take the responsibility to be the Homeland Security Secretary or the Attorney General. This is serious business, right? Why do we have to always debate like the numbers? Somebody's going to attack this report and say, it wasn't 43 billion, it was like 4 billion or 2 billion. That's fine, because I have no idea where they get these numbers and I don't really care. <laughs> what I know is there's millions and millions of bad guys, money moving through these accounts and moving around the world to help fund the agenda of the terrorists. So that's all I need to know. The Obama administration talked about that Hezbollah was one of the most technically capable terrorists in the world. Where the hell was the sense of urgency? The congressman pointed out the Hezbollah. I know that. I lived it. I watched it. And by the way, on that note, put yourself in my shoes, okay? I didn't know anything about Hezbollah. I'm not a terrorist expert, okay? I'm a law enforcement guy. My father was in law enforcement. My brother was in the Air Force, but he died in Afghanistan fighting for the country. But here's what I know. I know that one of the best admirals in the military, James Stavridis, handed me a fireball slide in 2007 and said, this is the slide, this is my vision of narco-terrorists and Islamic terrorists coming together. This is my worst nightmare. When Eric Calder came to see me at SOD back in 2009, that's what I told him, what keeps me up at night, because I have young kids. Okay, this is really bad. But then you hear Michael Chertoff says, they make Al-Qaeda look like the minor leagues. And we sit there, we laugh, we joke about it. It just keeps growing. It's like a snowball that just keeps growing, right? Uh, and, but the consequences of ignoring this are so severe, we just don't know it, right? They're here in our backyards. They're crossing over the border every day. We just don't know where they are. And then when something happens, people are going to say, how did that happen? Because you've been sleeping all these years and no one's holding anyone accountable. So Congress, let's go. Step it up. I'm here to help you. Human smuggling, cigarette trafficking, counterfeit products, drugs, weapons, it's massive. It's so complex, it's hard to actually keep track of. Uh, so basically, you know, SOD had a role of trying to synchronize the efforts of the multiple agencies. We had three countries there as well, Australia, the Canadians, and the Brits. And we also brought NYPD in. The problem was, whenever this stuff converges, like the congressman said perfectly, FTOs and TCOs converge. But our agencies don't converge. How about that? When is somebody going to ask that question to Mr. Ray, Chris Ray? If terrorists are turning to crime and criminal networks for funding, why the hell don't our terrorist investigators talk to our law enforcement investigators? What is the answer? Congressman, please write that down and ask him, because I'd like to be there for his answer. Okay? Look at the Boston bombing, catastrophic failure of information sharing because of that. And we can talk all day about that off record. Uh, anyway. Over the years, we've seen this nexus growing. My last congressional testimony, I took out on Google a 1985 hearing in Congress where they talked about drug trafficking and terrorism with dangerous mix. Are you kidding me? 32 years ago, we are talking about the same stuff today. This is insanity. So we have a great strategy for talk. Obama's people wrote it. We all participated in the interagency. You could wipe 
you know what with it because no one acted on it. Where's the operational implementation plan and who's held responsible every week for results? No one. So now Jeff Sessions, thank God, he announced this Hezbollah task force. So I'm anxiously waiting for results. I know the man in charge, John Cronin, he's a very solid prosecutor. And on that note, I will tell you that in 2010 in Southern District of New York, the, the U.S. attorney there, first one ever, knocked the walls down between drugs and terrorism because he recognized there's no reason for us to have a drug unit and a terrorism unit. We need the best and brightest of our government going after these threats. And that's the same thing we need on this whole Hezbollah global threat. And I could go on and on and on. I'm not going to take up more time because Vanessa's staring at me. I could feel the eyes no, looking no, at me. No, no, I'll come back to you with it's more okay. questions. It's <laughs> okay. But, but the thing is, is don't forget the Quds forces were already here. They went to our DEA informant in 2012 and said, yeah, we want to blow somebody up in D.C. We want to blow up embassies. We want to blow these people up. They were willing to pay a lot of money. Thank God the DEA and FBI worked together. We shared information on that event. And the guy's in jail. And everyone said, oh, my God, the Quds forces are in the Western Hemisphere. They've been here in the TBA and in Venezuela. Wake up, okay? And I don't mean to be a jerk with that stuff, but remember, I sat for 10 years in this interagency environment. When I got there, there were nine agencies. I built it up to 30 because I have a lot of passion for national security, public safety. But when I see inaction, I get very upset, and I get very passionate and loud, and I apologize. Maybe I get a little bit over the top. It's okay because my brother Mike is by my heart, okay? I had to bury him in this global war. So thank you very much, and I'll be here for any questions. Thank you so much, Derek, for your survey. Could, could I, I'd like to hear but more, uh, specifically from uh, Derek and Jose Luis, about how such a joint task force, how would you, how would you fix it, Derek? <laughs> okay, so this is another topic. I get my blood pressure going because here's, here's why. We'll give you a glass of water. You ever hear that saying, like, don't throw stones when you live in glass houses, right? So we're criticizing other countries, and we don't even have our act together here. So as an example, after 9-11, a lot of people don't know this. After 9-11, the attorney general, the DEA administrator, and the uh, head of the FBI decided that because drugs and terrorism are so connected, interconnected, and it was a dangerous mix, that's the exact term that's used in the testimony. Uh, I obsess on these things if you haven't figured it out. <laughs> and basically, they formed what they call the Special Coordination Unit at the Special Operations Division back in the day in, in 2002. And the reason they did that is because they saw all these overlaps between crime and terror. So we had to have a task force arrangement at that time. Well, when I got there and I saw this thing just growing through the roof, we had to actually get more resources, which thanks to Congress and others, DOD, they provided you know, global war on terror money to us. And we formulated what we call the Counter Narco Terrorism Operations Center, which is within SOD right down the road in, in, in uh, Virginia. But here's the point. So we have all the interagencies coming together. So in the, in the Project Cassandra thing that was very well publicized, one of the things that was fascinating to me is how well it worked with Treasury, as an example. Mm -hmm. They brought these powerful tools to the toolbox from the toolbox that I didn't even know about. But that's how we were able to crush these bad guys' ability to move their money. It wasn't a DEA thing. It was Treasury actions, right, with these experts. And so what I'm trying to say is that, so you have these task force arrangements already set up, but what's missing is the accountability. So what do, what do we do in this country? Is we build new centers. Hey, let's build another center because we want to coordinate gangs or we want to coordinate guns or whatever. No, it's all interconnected. We all know it. So why don't we look at the centers that are already working, see what we could do to enhance them, get the resources where everybody's uh, important. See, one of the things in the Beltway, as you all know, right, is SOD is kind of like, well, DEA runs that thing. We don't want to participate. Why not? You got kids at home, right? So if a, if a, if a bomb goes off in the metro and it's, it's kind of like a biological weapon, we're all impacted, right? So, so this mentality has got to be changed. And the only way that's going to change is from folks like you, Congressman, that can actually drill these, these leaders and ask the tough questions. Because right now they're getting off easy. Because, if, because here's why. They all want to do the right thing. I believe that in my heart. The problem is, is the messaging doesn't go down to the worker bees. And many of those, most of those want to do the right thing. But there's these bureaucratic mid-level people that need a sledgehammer over their head, and they need to be held accountable. And you do it one time, and then things change. 
So now, you get that fixed. Now you use these great countries in the five eyes. We already have good relationships with Australia, Canada. Hey, look, the best relations we had at SOD was with Colombia. All these multi-jurisdictional cases were because Colombian was sharing evidence. And we have judicial programs all over the world pursuant to the rule of law. So this is not that hard on the law enforcement side. But I agree with many of the statements that were made. This is much bigger than a law enforcement issue. It's like the drug issue, right? Law enforcement will enforce the laws, but it's all this other stuff that requires a full engagement, which we don't have. So, so can I just address that only because yes. it brings up a point? Oh, and Luis also, are you trying to make a comment? Or yeah, but please, please go okay. ahead. Okay. So, real quick. So, in the Obama administration's uh, transnational crime uh, strategy, which was a national emergency, a priority, everything that we've said, they designated what they called at the time the Threat Mitigation Working Group. It's on the White House website, you can read it. And they designated people to be in charge of that group. And the concept was to bring the interagency together to ensure maximum efficiency and prioritization. It's kind of like you're saying, if each individual agency is measured on certain things, then this is never going to be successful because people are going to do their own thing. That's true. But in that case, it's even, it's even worse because once we identified the priorities through the interagency, then we couldn't get the agencies to come together. And then no one did anything about it. So, so in, in uh, I'm sorry, I always forget names. Stewart. Stewart. In Stewart's uh, response, if, if the people above then turn around and say, wait a minute, time out. Who's in charge of that threat mitigation working group? Let's bring him in and start grilling them on how this can happen under his leadership. Then you'll see things changing. But they don't ask those questions. And then when tr President Trump gets on board, he basically signs off on the same type of transnational crime executive order. And I hope in four or five years we're, not so, we're, still, we're not, still not talking about it. So until somebody starts hitting them hard with the questions about the results and the accountability. So in that Project Cassandra, we actually had about 300 businesses in our country sending used cars to West Africa to sell to support Hezbollah, a global terrorist group. But we couldn't get the interagency to provide that information, so we only hit 30 businesses. So 270 were left out there running around in our country. Then you read all these potential sleeper cell reports. Well, maybe some of those businesses will be sleeper cells if Iran and Israel start going at it. But they're right here in our country. So until the tough questions, Stuart, I'm sorry, I remember your name, name this time. See, I'm bad at names. Remember that time at FDD event? Same thing. Uh, anyway, uh, so you got to have people above holding people accountable. We always talk about accountability, but there is none. Sorry. Derek, I'd like to say word? something uh, only because it's um, kind of like a closing thought just because like, you know, I went to college and I never consider myself like a genius or whatever like these guys on the panel, but or my friend EO over there because that guy is smart. But <laughs> can you guys do me a favor and just ask this question to whoever you can ask it to? If everyone is saying how terrorists are tapping into the criminal networks for their funding, why is our system in the U.S. still broken? Why? I can't accept that, I'm sorry. And what I mean by that is we have our JTTFs, which do tremendous work. So if you're a criminal investigator, everybody's trained that the criminal investigator must coordinate with the JTTFs when you have any information on terrorism. So if I'm working a drug case and the guy says, hey, I want to blow up the Sears Tower tomorrow, immediately you're going to notify the JTTF and the FBI and the intel community are going to do a good job and, and investigate that. That's not a problem. 99 point, and that's what happened in the Quds Force case. The DEA went right to the FBI, FBI did a great job, and they took down that guy. But in reverse, it's a disaster. So you're working a terror inquiry, you check the box of this guy's not a terrorism, and you don't tap into the resources of the law enforcement criminal investigators and the intelligence, so the person is left out there to do the bombing and do the killings instead of trying to take them down on the criminal side. So just ask yourself the question, how can a country be like the U.S. be so smart and so advanced, but that basic principle we can't fix? Why? I don't know the answer. I really don't. If you study all of these cases, it's too secret. We can't pass it to the state and locals. It's too secret. This guy's not cleared. That's a bunch of BS because we're in this together and our country is going to get destroyed if we don't start sharing the information and people have to be held accountable. So that's my closing thoughts on, on the point.